looking at modeling the synchronous machine and in the last lecture we had derived equations in the synchronous reference frame for the machine. Synchronous reference frame is also the rotor attached reference frame for the synchronous machine because the rotor of the synchronous machine rotates at synchronous speed. And since in the rotor of the synchronous machine there is a source of excitation, we attached the synchronous reference frame axis accordingly. The axis along which the main field of the alternator exists is then the d axis and the axis 90 degrees to that is the q axis. Historically the machine analysis field had developed starting from the synchronous machine and the direct axis has always been identified with that of the main field and the q axis uh, has been identified with an axis that is 90 degrees to it. It is only subsequently that the machine analysis methods were applied to the induction machine also and it is only beyond the 1960s that these machine equations were used for doing machine control of the induction machine. So, that is what we have been looking at, we have been seeing the synchronous machine modeling in the synchronous reference frame. And in the later part of the last lecture, we looked at referring the rotor variables also to the stator number of turns in the synchronous reference frame and we were seeing how the equations simplify as a result of that. So, let us look at those equations again. We start with the synchronous machine equations. You had V d s, V q s, V 0 s and V field. Instead of writing an elaborate description, we will combine all of them into an operational impedance matrix. So, that makes it a little more uh, easy to write. So, this is the uh, d axis applied voltage which consists then of a stator resistance drop and then plus the direct axis synchronous inductance P where the direct axis synchronous inductance is then going to consist of a leakage inductance of the stator plus 3 by 2 times L d, which we then called as L m d which is the magnetizing inductance three phase magnetizing inductance along the direct axis and this together is then the d axis synchronous inductance. So, that is what we had and then here it was minus L q s into omega s where L q s is defined as the leakage inductance of the stator plus 3 by 2 times L q, this being defined as L m q and then this together is then the quadrature axis synchronous inductance. And then there is no contribution here from the 0 axis term and then there is a d axis speed emf that is induced which was root of 3 by 2 times m s r multiplied by omega s. So, 
that forms the last entry. Here what you have is L d s times omega s and then R s plus L q s into p and then you have um, this is q and uh, 0, so 0 here and then there is no q axis induced PMF sorry. Um, this is along the direct axis, so this is p and then here you have the speed m emf, so this is root 3 by 2 into m s r into omega s and then along the 0 axis r s plus l l s into p, there is nothing there. Here you have root 3 by 2 into m s r into p there is no speed emf term because this is not a fictitious coil and then on the zero sequence term there is nothing here and then you have rf plus lf into p so this matrix multiplies ids iqs i0s and i field where lf is the self inductance of the field on the rotor that then consists of a leakage inductance and then a magnetizing inductance of the field. Now we started in the last lecture to refer the rotor variables to the stator turns and when we do that we said that it is referred to the stator turns under the assumption that if you now look at the d axis, the d axis has the field coil, this is on the rotor and then it has a fictitious coil derived from the stator that is the d s coil. So, this is d s coil and this is the field coil and since these two lie along the same axis, we assume that the flux that is linking the field links the d s coil also and if you now multiply the mutual inductance by the ratio of number of turns what you get is the magnetizing inductance along the d axis which we then called as which is the same as l m d that is the magnetizing inductance along the d axis. So, with that what happens is you the V f dash becomes the referred stator turns referred field voltage and here what you get is 3 by 2 times m s r into the turns ratio which then becomes L m d. Similarly, here you get L m d into p and this becomes L m d into omega s. Now, as far as the field is concerned, you get a turns ratio from replacing i f by i f dash and another equivalent term comes by replacing v f by v f dash. So, you get turns ratio squared in this in this term which then means r f is referred by the turns ratio squared to the stator turn. So, it becomes then r f dash and l f becomes referred by the turns ratio squared which is again l f dash, but in l f dash what happens is the leakage inductance gets referred by turns ratio. So, l f dash is nothing but l l f dash which is l l f multiplied by the turns ratio squared into 3 by 2 of course. l m f is the magnetizing inductance of the field and when you multiply that by the turns ratio squared what you get is the magnetizing inductance of the d axis coil and therefore, this is nothing but 
L m d here. So, L f dash is L l f dash plus L m d where L m d is then given by this expression. Along with this we then also have the expression for the electromagnetic torque. Torque was given as I d s into I q s into L d s minus L q s plus root 2 by root 3 by 2 m s r into I f into I q s. Now, that you replace it by the stator referred terms, this term becomes then L m d in I f dash. Yes. So, these are the equations referring the machine to the stator turns and in the synchronous reference frame. In this description, we have assumed that damper windings, damper bars have not been considered here. We saw in the beginning of the lectures on alternators that if you look at the alternator poles if this is the alternator pole and then you have the coils of the field that are wound here what we said was in the pole phase you have bars that are introduced which run along the length of the pole and these bars are all shorted here, shorted on this side with the result that if there is going to be any change in the speed from synchronous speed either more or less, then there will be induced EMF in these bars and there can be currents that flow in these bars and the shorting ring connects it to the bars on the next pole phase. So, there is going to be flow of currents all around and this causes the loop that thereby forms here causes a source of excitation along the q axis and definitely there is there are loops formed here which cause a source of excitation along the d axis and therefore, because damper bars are there it will affect the machine model by providing sources of excitation both along d and q and therefore, that is represented as follows. Let us draw the stator axis. So, this is your A s axis, B s and then the C s axis and then you have the rotor axis. So, let us say this is the axis of the rotor. So, you have the rotor angle and in the along 90 degrees to this axis you have the quadrature axis of the rotor. So, this is your D axis and the Q axis. What we had done earlier was you had the d s axis d s excited which is the stator um, winding converted to the synchronous reference frame which gives you a d s and q s coil this is q s coil. Apart from this in the model that we had written down we had a field excitation which was there along the d axis field. Now, if one wants to account for the presence of dampers, one has to consider at least one more coil on the d axis, which is a representation of the field that is generated by currents flowing on the d axis due to this. 
and one more coil at least on the q axis which accounts for the MMF that is generated along the q axis. Now, since these are always shorted by the shorting rings, we normally consider these two coils to be shorted and the normal symbol that is used to represent these two are k d coil and k q coil. So, if one is now going to include the effect of k d and k q, how do we modify this system of equations that we have derived so far. So, if one has to do that, remember we are going to write down the equation in the synchronous reference frame and we make use of the fact that we are writing these equations in a stator referred way. That means, we have already done this exercise where V f is replaced by V f dash, I f is replaced by I f dash and so on. Similarly, there will be flow of i k q in this coil and i k d in this coil. There are certain, certain number of turns here and certain number of turns here and when you refer everything to stator turns, then the equations really become easy to write. To modify that, let us extend this set of equations. Let us extend this set of equations. What we are now going to have is in addition to all this, you have a V k d dash and a V k q dash. So, we augment the first equation set by adding these two rows, this is extended. Now, what happens as a result of this? We know from the way in which we have uh, analyzed or derived these synchronous machine equations and indeed the generalized machine equations valid even for the induction machine, that the terms here are of different varieties. One is the stator, the self coil resistance terms and the self coil inductance terms and then the mutual, mutual d i by d t terms and then you have speed e m f terms. Now, self coil resistance terms are bound to be there and they will always occur along the diagonal like this. Self coil inductance terms will always be there, they will also occur along the diagonal in this manner. Mutual d i by d t terms, we have seen that they will occur between one coil and another coil provided they lie along the same axis. For example, here if you take voltage of the d axis term, you have a mutual inductance due to the field coil, which was the mutual between this d s and f. Now, you have one more coil k d, this will also cause a mutual inductance and because we are now writing it in a stator referred manner, you remember that mutual inductance multiplied by the ratio of number of turns gives us the magnetizing inductance and that magnetizing inductance is along the d axis and therefore, if we want to write include the effect of k d coil on the stator voltage stator d axis equation, it will arise as an L m d multiplied by p. And then you have speed e m f terms, speed e m f terms arise in one coil provided it is a fictitious one from the excitations on the axis 90 degrees away. Now, in this case 
k d is I mean we are looking at the equation for the d s term and this coil is definitely a fictitious coil because it is a representation of actually fixed coils on the stator. We are moving away to the synchronous reference frame and therefore, it is fictitious and therefore, these this will have speed emf terms and speed emf terms will arise due to coils that are in the axis 90 degrees away and you already have one speed emf term that is minus l q s into omega s due to the q s coil and now you need to provide another speed emf term due, due to the k q coil and therefore, this is l m q into omega s. Now, the speed emf term arising due to i q s is this is actually a source of excitation that is present in the stator itself, it is not on the rotor and therefore, the inductance term that arises in the speed emf term is the stator inductance of the q axis. Whereas, here this coil is present on the rotor and therefore, the term that comes here is the magnetizing inductance or the mutual inductance between the stator and the rotor. So, that is what is going to come here and then we examine what is going to happen in the q axis coil of the stator. So, q axis coil of the stator will then have a speed emf term due to the d axis on the field on uh, d axis on the rotor which will then be l m d into omega s and then between the q axis stator and the q axis damper you would then have a d i by d t term. So, that is l m q into t. The 0 axis is not affected by this operation. So, those two will be 0 and then you have v f d which is the equation for the field coil. So, the field coil is actually on the rotor. So, it is not a fictitious coil therefore, it will not have speed emf terms it will not have d i by d t terms due to ex excitations 90 degrees away, but it will have d i by d t terms connecting these two and of course, its own self term which is there. So, this is your uh, d axis column k d axis and this is your k q axis column and therefore, the field with the k d axis will then have an l m d into p with the q axis it would be 0 and then we come to the d axis equation that is k d equation. So, this along with the direct axis would have an l m d into p they are on the same axis with respect to the q axis of the stator there is not anything because this is not a fictitious coil it is directly on the d axis and then with respect to the 0 axis term there is nothing. With respect to the field it has an l m d into p and then with respect to this one you have r k d this is the self term. So, there is a resistance of the damper and then a self inductance of the damper referred to the stator turns and then with the q axis of the damper there is not any term there. So, similarly here this would be 0 you have l m q into p with the 0 axis term there is not anything and then uh, this is with the field. So, there is no term here with the d axis there is no term here here you have r k q dash plus l k q dash into p. So, the matrix is this, this matrix is then multiplied by the vector of currents. So, that is assumed to be present here, let me not write that again. So, that is i d s, i q s, i 0 s, 
i f dash i k d dash and i k q dash. So, that then is the model of the synchronous machine having one coil to represent the damper along the d axis and one coil along the q axis referred to stator turns. And as usual one can write the expression for torque by using the relation I transpose G I. You have to separate out the speed EMF terms into the G matrix and then multiply it as I transpose G I one gets the torque. So, in you can see that if you want to augment the description by having more coils to represent the damper windings. some more coils if you want. Now, those can be added very easily by understanding how this representation is. There is one more aspect that I think I have missed, this P D M F term here is negative. So, that is then the synchronous machine equation. One can uh, look at derive, uh, uh, developing this in, in terms of flux variables. And let us look at how it can be written in terms of flux variables for a simpler description not having this elaborate form. So, to develop these equations or to represent it in flux variables, we will again neglect the damper windings. Neglecting damper because it is just simpler to write. Otherwise, one can still uh, define the flux linkages as psi d s, which is the flux linkage of the stator winding along the d axis is L d s times I d s. That is the self inductance direct axis synchronous inductance multiplied by I d s plus L m d into I f dash, the mutual inductance multiplied by the field current stator referred with respect to turns and then you have L m d into I k d. I think following our notation we should be consistent. So, let us put all the rotor variables as superscripts. So, this will be k d dash and k q dash. So, i k d dash if there are more representations along the d axis for the dampers then you would have this as k d dash 1 and then maybe i k d dash 2, i k d dash 3 and so on. So, that would be the form and similarly psi q s could would be written as the quadrature axis synchronous inductance multiplied by i q s. There is no field along the q axis in the rotor. So, after this there is there are only the dampers and therefore, L m q into i k q dash. If there are more representations for the damper you will have more such terms. So, to develop the equations in the flux variables let us consider a simpler form. We will neglect the damper bars and therefore, we are going to consider only a subset of these equations which is up to this. So, now that expression can be written as V d s is R s plus L s L uh, how have we written d s L d s into P into I d s plus minus L q s into omega s into I q s and then plus L m d into P I f dash and then you have V q s is L m d into omega s into I d s plus 
R s plus L q s into L q s p into I q s and then plus L m d omega s into I f dash. So, that is the equation for the stator and what we see here is you have L d s into I d s. So, let us rewrite that V d s we will take the stator resistance term out. So, that is L s into I d s and then you have L d s into I d s plus L m d into I f which is the same as your stator d axis flux linkage. So, that can be written as P times psi d s and then you have minus L q s omega s into I q s. L q s into I q s is psi q s that is what we see here psi q s is L q s into I q s and therefore, you have minus omega s into psi q s and then we write the expression for V q s that is again R s into I q s and then you have L s I q s, L q s I q s which is nothing but therefore, P times I q s and then you have omega s times psi d. So, this is a simpler representation of the machine equation represented by flux variables. This is often used in order to do computations with this the expression for the generated torque, torque is I d s into I q s into L d s minus L q s plus L m d into I f dash into I q s. So, this is what you have. This can be written as Now, let us split the terms I d s I q s into L d s minus I d s I q s into L q s plus L m d into I f dash into I q s. Now, these two terms together one can combine this and you see that that can be written as I q s multiplied by L d s into I d s plus L m d dash into I f dash minus I d s into L q s I q s. Now, this term is nothing but your psi d s as we have defined and therefore, this can be simplified as I q s into psi d s minus I d s. This term is nothing but psi q s. So, that is psi q s. So, torque can again be written in terms of product of flux into flow of I. So, these are different ways in which one can represent the synchronous machine equations which is useful for study. Though we have been representing the electrical equations and the expression for T, in order to describe the dynamics of the system one must not forget that you need the mechanical equation also and the mechanical equation takes the form generally this is your generated torque. Remember again all the equations that have been written are being written with motor convention. We may be analyzing synchronous machines normally when we study uh, the first course on electrical machines. Synchronous machines are not studied under this convention, they are studied using the generator convention. Whereas, we have used this convention in order to maintain the continuity 
of what we had started as induction machines. And indeed nowadays there are synchronous machines that are being used for control purposes at least as synchronous motors in which case this is a convention that one would be using to study these machines. And therefore, using this convention the generated T e is output from the machine is it is a mechanical output. So, this mechanical output minus the load torque is going to result in an increase in speed. Load torque may then consist of a fixed component and in addition viscous friction drag components which are to the exponent of omega 1, omega power 1 or omega squared and so on. So, all those terms are going to come into T l. So, we have been looking at lot of these machine equations, how to develop these machine equations and so on. However, if you look back on whatever we have done, we have not made any reference to the conventional way in which you would look at a machine let us say in a first course in induction machine. The first course in induction machine normally starts or deals with the steady state analysis <coughs> and starts by developing equi equivalent electrical circuits. For example, if you take the induction motor, what you would do is to study the induction motor, you would develop an equivalent electrical circuit, which is a per phase electrical circuit. And that electrical circuit is developed based on a uh, an understanding of how the machine would work. Namely, you have a rotating magnetic field and then you have therefore, some currents flowing in the rotor and that voltage induced in the rotor depends on the number of turns and therefore, so on and so forth. Right? Whereas, here in the development that we have done, we have not made any reference to the equivalent circuit of the induction machine at all. We have directly started by assuming that the stator of the induction machine has three phases distributed in a certain manner and then we found out an expression for distributed winding inductances. We have developed it from a totally different angle. So, what is then the relationship between whatever we have derived now and what we have understood from the first machines course regarding the equivalent circuit and the performance of the induction machine. So, do these two match at all? will this give the same equivalent circuit that what we have been using in the first course on electrical machines. I am sure some of you would have had this doubt. So, let us look at how to do steady state analysis before we make use of this equation for more sophisticated applications. We need to understand that these equations indeed boil down to what we have been studying in the first course when we did steady state analysis. So, that is what we will now look at. When we say steady state analysis, what we automatically assume is we are looking at sinusoidal steady state analysis. That means, the voltages that are applied to the machine are pure sinusoids and therefore, the responses flow of I A S or I B S I C S they will also be pure sinusoids and you do not have any speed variation. Right? So, this means that speed has settled down both voltages and currents are pure sinusoids current transients have settled down have gone to zero note disturbances. So, everything is a nice sinusoid that is there. So, let us look at the induction machine equation. So, let me write down the equations in the synchronous reference frame. 
you have V D S, V Q S, V D R and V Q R. Remember that when we are using a balanced excitation, zero sequence is absent and therefore, we need not really represent the zero sequence. Most cases of machine analysis, zero sequence may indeed be neglected since it is balanced. Here you have R s plus L s into P, omega s into L s and you have L m into P, L m into omega s minus omega r. Now, that we have just now finished the synchronous machine modeling, it would be appropriate to draw your attention to these two terms. There is no L m d and L m q here, but just an L m this arises because the induction machine has a perfectly cylindrical uh, arrangement in the rotor. There is no saliency and therefore, you do not have L m d and L m q coming here. And then you have minus omega s L s R s plus L s into P. Similarly, here there is no direct axis synchronous inductance or the quadrature axis synchronous inductance. It is just the self inductance of the stator. R minus L m omega s into P So, this would then be the machine equation with I d s, I q s, I d r and I q r. Similarly, V d r and so, that is the machine equation. Now, the equivalent circuit of the induction machine as we draw in the uh, normal way refers to the per phase equivalent circuit. Per phase equivalent circuit in the stator reference frame that is the then the actual phase variables that are applied. So, we have to transform these equations into the normal A B C reference frame. And how does one do that? We have V d s, V q s, V 0 s and so on. So, if you want to transform those equations, you have V d s, V q s, V 0 s is of course, 0. So, we need not really consider that. So, let us look at V d s and V q s and this has to now be transformed to the alpha beta reference frame and then the three phase frame. So, how to transform V d s and V q s to the alpha beta frame? You remember that the transformation V d V q from alpha beta was cos theta and then um, sin theta minus sin theta and cos theta. So, in this case when you want to invert this you will get the transpose of that matrix. So, you have cos theta minus sin theta and then sin theta and cos theta that would then be in the alpha beta frame and then from the alpha beta frame you want to transfer to the a b c frame and there again you have to transpose whatever uh, system matrix that we used. So, that is root of 2 by 3 into 1 and 0. Remember this when you go from alpha beta to d q what we had used was 
I mean A B C to alpha beta what we had used was root of 3 by root of 2 by 3 into 1 minus half minus half 0 root 3 by 2 and minus root 3 by 2 1 over root 2 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2. Now since we are taking the first row first column to be the first row you have 1 0 and 1 by root 2 since 0 sequence is not considered that 1 over root 2 can be neglected and this will now give us your A B C if you put 3 rows here and so on. But then what we are interested in is a per phase equivalent circuit which means it is enough to consider the A phase alone and if we are going to consider the A phase alone we need to consider the first row here and the first row here is going to be obtained by multiplying this first row by the first column the first row by what you get here and therefore that is this column this term into this minus this term into this second row is not really important. So essentially then what you have here is V d s cos theta minus V q s sin theta the second term that is going to come here which is V d s into sin theta plus V q s into cos theta is not important because that is going to multiply 0 and therefore what we can say is that V A S the stator A phase voltage is nothing but root of 2 by 3 times V D S cos theta minus V Q S sin theta. this is V A S. Now similarly one can do the same thing for I D S and I Q S as well. You can substitute here I D S and I Q S same way you transform it reverse in the reverse sense and get back I A S, I B S and I C S. Again we are looking at a per phase equivalent circuit so it is sufficient to consider I A S alone and therefore you would have <coughs> another equivalent relation. I A S is equivalent equal to root 2 by 3 into I D S cos theta minus I Q S sin theta. What we started out with the equation description here is the induction machine in the synchronous reference frame that means a reference frame rotating at synchronous speed theta is the angle that the reference frame D axis makes with respect to the stator A axis and since the frame rotates at synchronous speed one can therefore say theta must be equal to synchronous speed multiplied by time assuming that at T equal to 0 the D axis coincides with that of the stator A phase axis. So using this description then one can try to derive the uh, steady state equivalent of the induction machine. We have done this for stator A phase uh, V and I. Similarly, one has to write down the expression for V D R, I mean V A R and I A R. So, once you get expressions for these things, we can try to process it and see whether we can derive an equivalent circuit like representation from this in order to do steady state analysis. So that part of it we will look at it in the next lecture, we will stop with this for today.